What's up, brother? What's up, man? Man, good to see you. It's good to be here, man. I'm so glad to have you on here. Thanks for taking the time. I was thinking about my early just introduction to you and who you are. And I was a worship leader at Willow Creek. I remember, the, I'm trying to remember the first mm. time I ever heard your name. I was wor- I was leading worship at Willow Creek. I was on staff there for a couple of years. It was 2007, maybe 2008. And I remember we were preparing for this big baptism service and we were in this creative meeting talking about like what songs, you know, can we do for this baptism service? And someone was like, have you guys heard this new song uh, called Jesus Paid It All? Christian Stanfield were like, no. And they played it in the room and we were like, oh my gosh, this is insane. You know, that bridge, oh, praise the one. And I ended up playing that song, I think (laughs) at least twice a (laughs) month for the next five years. Like you basically were in our set list like forever for like the next five years. I actually really want to bring that song back because that is just a killer song. Yeah, man, it's funny you bring that song up. the guy who wrote that bridge is a good friend of mine, Alex Nifong. And um, we were we were really close when he wrote it. And uh, we brought it to uh, 722, which was a Bible study in Atlanta um, back in the yeah. day. But uh, that song, it's funny you bring that song up because it, it's uh, it's like it's circling back. I'm, I'm talking to more people about that song again. And Alex yeah. and I have reconnected and rekindled our friendship and so I, maybe it's time, man. Maybe I just need to, you know, pay attention to that wind that's blowing. Maybe God is bringing. Yeah, that song. You might certainly need to do that, a that song. Yeah, well, it served the church for a long time, and um, yeah, it's such a pow- powerful song. Really powerful. I um, I remember watching. Yeah, I remember watching Seven Twenty Two online. They were like the first worship live stream that was like ever happening yeah. anywhere. No one was live streaming worship before Seven Twenty Two. That was yeah. pretty wild. Those yeah. were those were cool days too. And then I remember, I was thinking too, I remember being at Passion 2012 and I was standing in the back and you were leading worship. I think you were doing like One Thing Remains and some other song. I can't remember what other songs you were doing there. Yeah. But it, yeah. But it seemed like a big like passion moment for you. But I just remember I was standing back in the back by the soundboard next to Jason Ingram. And Jason, mm-hmm. I remember it, he, we were kind of just like, man, this guy is like, like he's so good like this is amazing and i remember jason just being like oh man his his parents are so proud of him and oh, wow i don't know if i don't know if your parents were there or like standing in front of us <laughs> i don't even know but i just remember i just remember him saying that to me and just being wow. like man this is just so cool to like kind of watch like i think jason was it was cool for jason to watch your journey you know yeah. then in in that stadium there so tell us about how well, you started leading worship and how did how did you get started with passion well, I, um, I started leading worship when I was in middle school. Uh, I, I, it turns out this is the story of a lot of different worship yeah. leaders, but uh, you know, our middle school ministry needed a, a, a worship leader to lead some songs and word got around that I had a guitar and I was trying to figure out how to sing. And more or less, I got pushed out on stage against my will. I think I, I, told, I told the guy who asked me no probably two or three times before he finally yeah. was like, look, man, I'm not asking anymore. I need you to do this. Yeah. And that, you know, a, a lot of trial and error, of course. But um, we we saw God do some really special stuff in our youth ministry all through high school. And uh, I just thought, man, if I could, man, God, if you, if you let me be a part of this, helping people connect to you through these songs, then I want to be yeah. a part of it. And so led all through college. I met Louie at a uh, student summer camp that he was speaking he was one of the speakers at the camp and i was one of the worship leaders and we met and started talking and louis he was like man i just i love you i want to be your friend i just believe in what you're doing and um it really just started off as a friendship yeah and then uh he asked if i would come be a part of passion 2005 in nashville uh as a leading worship for a, um, a community group, kind of a smaller group off the, you know, the big gathering in the arena. And I've been a part of it ever since. And I yeah. uh, fell in love with the family of people here, fell in love with uh, uh, what, what God is doing at Passion. And uh, yeah. to be honest, I'm 
still a part of it with a lot of the same people. So, yeah. you know, however many years later, 17 years later, here we, here we all are still doing it and um, still yeah. have amazing stories. To tell. So are you on staff at the church? I and am. Does your, and does your, I and am. does your, I guess the reason I asked that is like, does your week look like a typical like worship leader at a church, you know, kind of the scheduling and putting bands together and picking songs and. Uh, it did. It did look like that for a while. Uh, for about seven years, I was the day-to-day -day worship pastor here at Passion City, leading our team, rostering bands, um, connecting with worship leaders, and I did that for a while. Um, I think at heart, I'm a creative person. I'm an artist, and I think the way that I serve our church and our house and our team the best is when I'm creative and I'm writing. Um, and I have some space to do that. And so now uh, our day-to-day -day worship pastor is a guy named Jeff Johnson, who is doing an amazing job leading our team, rostering bands and doing all that. Um, and I support him. I want to be an encouragement to him, hold up his vision. I'm still leading almost every Sunday here. I'm still yeah. connecting with young worship leaders here, but I have a lot more space to, to dream and write and be creative. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's that's really it's 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 helped me and my family out with our rhythm of life. But I think it's also served our team the best. Yeah. Uh, but it, as far as like a weekly schedule, um, we have stuff throughout the week that I'm a part of. Um, but I've, I spend a lot of time writing and um, yeah, and connecting with other guys here on our team. Are you traveling to write or do you do like virtual writes? Like what is what does songwriting typically look like for you? I do travel some. We do. Uh, we go to Nashville a good bit to write. We have a lot of writers, friends. We have writing camps throughout the, the year where we'll bring a, a large group of writers to our church here in Atlanta and we'll write for Passion and for Passion City Church. I do a lot of writing on my own. Um, uh, a lot of like the genesis of a lot of ideas tend to happen when I'm when I'm alone and I have time to process what what God's doing and uh, my life, my family's life, our community, church, what I'm yeah. learning through scripture, other, other books that I'm reading. When I have enough space to process those things and write down lyrics or um, capture little voice memos, that that tends to be where a lot of the genesis of, of, of yeah. songs come. So, but yeah, uh, I haven't had a lot of success with the virtual thing, man. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I, songwriting is such a relational thing. Um, mm -hmm. And... It, I love being in the room with other people and tag teaming, you know, the, 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 yeah. um, the pr process. And so I, I have done some virtual writing and I have finished songs virtually. Um, but at the end of it, I was like, I think I would have rather just been in the room. With that yeah. Person. Cause you kind of you write off the energy of each other. Yeah. yeah. You write off the yeah. energy off each other and there's not the delay in zoom or. Right. Right. Weird. So, I do like to be face to face with people. Yeah. I'm kind of with, I'm, I'm the same way in that. Like, I think I, I'm, I write better or at least all of it starts alone. And I prefer to kind of start writing alone and then bring in yep. some other like great minds to, or like get in the room with people to make it better. Is there a time of day that you reserve for songwriting? Usually in the morning. So once yeah. it gets past lunchtime, uh, I've learned that I, my, um, my output, my creative output tends to drop. So my kids go to school around 7, 15, 7, 20 in the morning. And then from about then to lunchtime, I'll do some reading. I might go on a run, um, and just create space to, uh, free myself from technology or any yeah. other distraction, just receive, just open my hands and receive. Sometimes I'm literally just journaling or I'm just jotting down ideas or sometimes I'll sit at the piano or grab a guitar, but I just try to make space for things to flow through. Just be available to the ideas, be available to the melodies and the lyrics. Um, mm. And I just find that the more that I do that and create that space, uh, the more the ideas tend to flow through. And is that typically just about every weekday, Monday through Friday? Not every weekday, but most. I'm, I'm creating time to, yeah, I'm creating time to write and create on most days. Yeah. Um, some days it looks different. Like we've just, like you mentioned, um, 
I released Make It Out Alive, a solo artist project in November. We just had Passion 2023 happen. There was a yeah. lot of creative output happening for both of those projects. Yeah. And so I feel like right now I'm in more of a, a, a time where I'm, I have my eyes open, I have my hands open, and I'm just observing. And I'm just taking in, I'm writing down a lot of ideas, I'm capturing mm -hmm. a little bit of melody stuff, but I'm not, I'm not trying to finish anything right now. I'm just, I'm just observing and, and collecting ideas. ideas. And, um, and then eventually, like, you know, it's February now, I'd say probably in the March, April, um, things will start to, those will start to take more of a, a cohesive shape mm -hmm. and become a song. Yeah, the reason I'm kind of drilling into that topic is just that I think that a lot of people who are listening to this, they want to maybe write, they want to be creative, but no one's carving out the time. Like it really does take intentionality to carve out the time to make it happen to, to literally, I love that you said you kind of separate from technology a little bit, you know, turn your phone off and, and also maybe use the best hours of your day to do it, you know, like do the mindless tax, tasks in the afternoon, the emails, the calendars kind of items. But in the morning is when your brain is like fresh and, you know, full of ideas, has the most energy. Yes. Use that for, yes. that. And I just, I just think it's important for people to hear that it does take intentionality. It does. I was talking to another songwriter about it one time and just talking about it, like stoking a fire or fueling a fire. Like you, you keep feeding mm -hmm. the fire. Sometimes it's not like, you know, blazing out of control, but you just always yeah. want to be feeding that fire and keep the embers hot. So whenever right. it comes time to write that song or you, you get in a room with people that you're, you've already stoked that creative fire, there's something already in the furnace that's going and you can yeah. bring something to the table. So it's important for me. I, I've learned to give myself a break. You know, I used to beat myself up and go, I didn't write anything today or I didn't finish something today or I'm not happy with what came out today. But what I've learned is all of that leads to something. It all comes out one way or another and yeah. um so it's just just uh, you keep showing up keep writing yeah. write a hundred bad songs you know you're gonna yeah. write a lot of bad songs that nobody's gonna <laughs> hear but, yeah. but, but then two or three will come out that could really touch somebody yeah yeah what um just kind of with the whole work from home and like virtual environment like are you do you typically write at home or do you go to the church and write or is there a, is there another space you're going to to write I do a little bit of both. So the church is awesome because we have a studio here, we have a piano, we have guitars. It's easy to come here and write. Inevitably though, if I'm here, I'll get scooped into yeah, another something. activity or another meeting or some, I'll run into somebody and we'll yeah. start talking and then an hour has gone by. Um, if I'm, if I can be at home, I have a little space at home where I can tuck away when my kids are at school and, um, you know, my, my wife is home. But she also works. She does real estate here in Atlanta. So we're, there are times where the, where the house is quiet. So I, I do a little bit of both. I, last year, I, I would go on these long walks or runs and I would, you know, put my phone on Do Not Disturb. And that was, it just sounds crazy, but a lot of songs would like download as I was walking or just processing or praying. Mm -hmm. And so I think it can happen in any number of ways in, in different places. But um, but to answer your question, I do at church yeah. and at home. Yeah, that's yeah. I kind of was curious because from my from my experience having kids like upstairs. I mean, it's nice that your kids are at school. I've got like all young yeah. little kids, like two years old, four year old, and I hear them upstairs. I even hear them right now, like running around, like banging stuff against the walls, and I'm like, I can't even write with that kind yeah. of like stuff going yeah. on because I feel like I need to be up there to make sure that like they're not burning the house down. Yeah. Yeah, once they get home around four o'clock, it's the clock is up. I'm done. Yeah. There's yeah. no is uh, my I want to be with them as a dad. I want to be yeah. with them, and they're coming to find me. And um, yeah, so yeah, no. Well, so let's talk about your new album. You did a solo album called "Make It Out Alive," released in November, right? That's right. What, yeah. So first of all, what inspired you to even release a solo album? Because I don't. Had you done that before? Well, I guess you had done like worship stuff before, but maybe yeah, not. It was like worship. kind of devotion. What would you call this? Like devotional music? Or yeah, devotional uh, singer songwriter storyteller. 
Yeah. I would put it more in that camp. I had had two other records, artist records come out with six steps, but you're right. They were more worship. Um, yeah. Something that probably people would expect, you know, worship leader type stuff. So tell us about this album and like what inspired it or is there a background story to it? Yeah. I mean, it's, I'll try to condense it down, but um, you know, 2020 just sidelined all of us. You know, we had a lot of, a lot of plans. Um, I know everybody's tired of talking about 2020, but it actually plays a big role in how this record happened. Um, we had a, a full schedule of stuff that we were ready to do in 2020. It all went away, got canceled. And that just forced me to be home, be still, be silent, which is something that I hadn't done in a long time. And I started looking in the mirror and taking an honest look at my life and just realizing that there were some things going on in my life, behaviorally, um, rhythms of life, ways of thinking that were just really unhealthy. And after years of going unchecked, they had grown into something that was just not okay and not good, some addictive behavior that I needed to address. And um, and so uh, it was time to, to deal with it. So I, you know, my, my wife, my, my closest friends here in Atlanta, um, Louie and Shelly were a big part of the process. Um, counselors got involved. Um, I just started like, un, uh, like digging up all of this stuff and realizing that like the topical, the topical issue really wasn't the issue. That was like a symptom of something that was like mm -hmm. much deeper. Yeah. And so I started this process of like, excavating and digging up all of the junk and finally yeah. looking at it for what it what it actually is and that's hard work man i don't know if you know if you've done that kind of work or if people listening have done that kind of work but like it's not easy it's exhausting yeah. i would get done with a day i went to this like counseling intensive in tennessee for a while and i would get to the the end of the day and i would have i literally would have felt like i had run a marathon like my body yeah. was exhausted my, my mind was exhausted um, I had no more tears to cry. I mean, it was just, yeah. but, but through that process, I started to come back up to the surface and my, my heart started to sensitize, attend, uh, sensitize again to, to good things and God's voice. And, um, yeah. I was becoming, you know, uh, like flesh again. And through, through that process, getting healthy and getting whole, I started to write these songs and yeah. they were more like journal entries than anything else. They were more conversations with God or conversations with my soul. And yeah. um, the honest truth is, bro, the honest truth is that I didn't think that I would share the songs like with anybody. I've written songs like this before, and they were just more like therapeutic, like just like yeah. this was really good for me to process. But, but what I started to figure out is that people who are, are struggling with some of the same stuff I was struggling with or just because life is hard, they feel like we feel like we're alone in all of it. And mm -hmm. that would break my heart because that's how I felt for a long time. I can't talk to anybody about what's really going on because if I yeah. do, people will think I'm a freak. Yeah. But the truth is, is we're all, we all carry brokenness. We all struggle with something in life and yeah. people are just waiting for someone to be real about it and go, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm broken, I'm struggling. So I thought I really, I started to pray about it. I started to talk to some, people about it, wise people about it yeah. and process with our team here in Atlanta and go, I think, I think I want to put these songs on a record. And so that's what make it out alive is it's these very honest, very raw, um, almost confessional. Sometimes these songs of just processing my journey of recovery and getting healthy. And, um, yeah. and it, the whole, the whole goal of it, man, was like just to start a conversation and go like, Hey, like, it's, it's okay if you're not okay, but like, that's not the end of the story. Like mm -hmm. God, God wants to work in this process of brokenness and healing. I know it's hard, but he wants to use it to make you more like Jesus and bring you back up into the purpose that he created you for. And bro, it has been that I've had so many conversations on Instagram or just Bro, like walking through Starbucks or mm -hmm. walking through the halls of our church, people stopping me and going, dude, I'm I, I'm struggling with this or I've, I'm, you know, this many years sober from this yeah. or uh, it, it's just been wild, dude. Like as soon as you open that door, you realize yeah. how close this community is all around you. So yeah. I've been so, so, so happy about it, man. And 
I, I do want to say like our, our team here has just been phenomenal and just saying, let's go for it. Let, I think yeah. this could really help people. So that, that's make it out alive. Yeah. It came out in November and, um, yeah. Isn't it amazing just what a little bit of vulnerability will do to relationships and, you know, when people are just open, cause that's what happened with this album is you, these were like personal songs, journal entries, really prayers. And you were vulnerable with it though, in that you shared it with everybody. And then people are like, yeah, yeah. that's me. I, I also feel that way. And it also, I think it makes people feel, well, yeah, like they're not alone. They're not crazy. Um, man, I, so first of all, I wanna ask a question. Do you, does, does the sentence or the phrase trust the process mean anything to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, I say yeah, that because yeah. you and I went to the same place. And, okay, uh, great, yeah. And, and um, I, man, I had a lot of the same kind of experience and 2020 mm, did like wreck, right. wreck a lot of people mm. and we're just exposed yes. a lot of, I think, brokenness that we already had. And I'll say that um, when I went to that place in Tennessee as well, what was so healing for me was to see all these other people and like I was healing from their healing and like seeing mm -hmm. them, like them being vulnerable and them sharing their stories and then them going and doing the work. And like, it was healing to be around people who were being vulnerable. And so yes. you can actually be the remedy for someone by just even just being real and sharing like what you're going through, which is what I love about what we did with this exactly album. Right. Because That's just exactly by doing right, that, bro. it brings healing to other people. <laughs> and yes, yes. I, I think that's why, you know, in the, in the, um, you know, you, you share your story with people and then they start sharing their story and it just reminds you, it's another reminder of the journey that we're all on. Yeah. Um, and it reminds you that you're not alone. You're not walking alone. And, um, I remember sitting in a circle with guys the, the first night I got uh, to this intensive, I was sitting in a circle with some guys and they were saying stuff that, I had thought were, it was out of bounds to say like for years. Yeah. I'm like, you can't, I didn't know you could like say that to somebody else. And yeah. I'm in the circle about four other guys. Some of these guys have become my best friends. Like they're guys that I still keep up with. Yeah. And I remember, I remember thinking for the first time, like maybe I'm not crazy. Like maybe I'm not alone. Maybe this is like, there's a community of people who, yeah. So it, yeah. you're so right, man. There's, and I, I, I really believe it's the way forward, man. I think, yeah. I, I really, I really hope and pray that, you know, that, uh, th that the days of playing church are over, but like we yeah. can actually be the church and be vulnerable and be real with each other and hold yeah, each other man. up in the high times and the, and the low times. And, um, yeah, yeah, man, I love that. That's, it's kind of cool to hear that you went, um, to that intensive. Mm -hmm. That was a life changing, yeah. life changing experience for me. And I really hope that Me everybody too. could experience something like that. And really what it was, it was just people being really real and being able to talk about, <laughs> you're right. The things that in church, you'd be like, wait, we can't say that. <laughs> or you can't, like, yeah, we can't right. talk about that. And, but it's something that just, it kind of levels, levels the ground. So I, man, I appreciate you doing that. And I mean, we're here yeah. to talk about your album, but actually I was just going to say that I, during that time, I actually also wrote a collection of songs that were just my mm. own personal prayers, vulnerability, really, as well. Like they're just, and I'm actually releasing them in a couple of weeks. And I didn't know if I was going oh, to. Oh, right. Going to. So, oh, that's awesome, dude! Way to go! Yeah. When I'm does it come out? It. What's it called? It's called Spirit Songs, and yeah, beautiful. Comes out February 24th, and they're just Congrats, the songs man. from from my spirit. Like these are my prayers to God. Yeah. Not worship songs. Bro, we, we, we need more of that. I think we've, I, well, I'll just speak for me. I put so much pressure on releasing music or releasing songs. Yeah. And what we need more of is just going, this is what God is breathing through me right now. And I'm just going to put it out. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it may not, it may not win a bunch of awards. I may not be on the red carpet at the Grammys, but somebody somebody is going to get yeah. touched by this yeah, somebody, and, uh, yeah. just take the pressure off it, man. And just go, this is what it is today. Next year I might have a different collection of songs yeah. and that's great too. 
you know? And you have to like, yeah, I know. And that's kind of a scary thing. I'm sure there's probably lines on this record that you were like, oh man, I don't know if I can, if I can say that or if I can like actually put that yeah. out there. Um, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, there's a line in one of my songs that says, um, I sing these songs of faith because I know they're true, but honestly, there's days I still doubt them. Yeah. I doubt them too. And I'm like, I don't know if, I don't know if I should say, <laughs> if I should say that, but yeah. I feel like it's just no. it's real, man. It so, is. It is. That's um, great, man. Tell us about like, is there just to close this up? Um, is there a specific song on Make It Out Alive that you would love? You know, for a worship leader listening to it right now, something mm -hmm. that one that like really means a lot to you that you're like, I really want people to listen to this one if they were to listen to one. Yeah. Well, I think the the title track is probably it means a lot to me means a lot to the process um that that song i think represents i think you know parenthetically i think it represents the whole the whole project and um you know the, the whole idea in the song make it out alive is that you know our tendency when we when we face up against something that seems impossible or when the bottom falls out or we hit rock bottom we we want to hit the eject button and like mm run from it or we want to just we just want it to be over as soon as possible which i get that it's hard but i i've come to find out that god wants to bring us through it step by step one day at a time yeah. um, and that is hard work like we want to run and hide we would rather not fight but in the perseverance right i mean this is in scripture in james it's like in the perseverance that produces something good produces something godly so when things get hard, we persevere in it. We take one step at a time with Jesus and with other people. And before we know it, and man, I've lived this, you look up one day and you go, I'm not where I was a year yeah. ago, two years ago. Right. I, I made it out alive. I'm here and my head is clear. My eyes are clear. The light is shining on my family, my, my life again. And, um, and so that song in, in particular is just one that I really want to encourage people who find themselves in a really tough spot to go lean into it, do the work. This time you, you curse it. I think you get there and you go, I don't want to be going through this, but it, it, it ends up being the greatest gift that God could give to us is that, that, uh, that humbling, that discipline, um, because it produces something in us that's, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, I think That's my encouragement awesome, would be, yeah, just lean into it. So, you know, it's the whole bridge of the song. You step into the furnace, let the fire serve its purpose. You know, it hurts, <laughs> so man. Good. It hurts so yeah. bad, but yeah. it, 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 it's refining. Um, so yeah, that, that song, that song means a lot to me. It's so good, man. Well, I, I would encourage everybody to go check that out and listen to that. So my final question for you is if you mm -hmm. could go back and tell a young version of yourself, Think back to like Christian yeah. Stanfield, 2006, you know, the Jesus paid it all days, even maybe, maybe even a little before that. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, you know, you're sitting down for coffee with a young, new young worship leader. What's some advice that you'd give yourself for the road ahead? What would you say? That's a great question. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is I would say, you can't do this alone. I think that would be what I would tell somebody. You're going to need people. Like I have in my life, I've got, two guys that I am just brutally honest with, oddly specific about everything going on in my life. And if I didn't have those guys, I wouldn't make it. Like I wouldn't be in my right mind and things would get squirrely real fast. They did get squirrely. Mm -hmm. So I think for a long time, I, th I thought that I could do it on my own or I thought I had to in my own strength. I had to figure it all out on my own. But what I've learned, especially over the last few years, is that we weren't meant to to live this life alone. We weren't meant to lead alone. Um, community and family is everything. So I would say find your people, man. Find people that you trust and that you can open your life up to. Not like, not like generally like, uh, you know, but like people that you can be really specific with. So I think that's what I would say is you, you can't do it alone. Isn't it interesting too that I was thinking about my experience in Tennessee and that it was easier to do that with people you just didn't know. Or the people that yeah. 
they didn't know who you were and they didn't know where you were from and you probably maybe would never see them again although i'm still in touch with all those people it's a lot of them still yeah as well but yeah. if we could somehow harness, yeah you have to create you it. it yeah you do yeah you, you have you have to create it you have to instigate it so yeah. Like I'm not good, I'm not good at this part of, of things in life. So I've had to learn how to do this, but like you put it on the calendar. So like yeah. every Tuesday, like Tuesday is my connection day. So I have coffee with these two guys um, that are in my life. And uh, man, we just put it all out on the table. I drive from that to another small group of guys um, who were being like, kind of mentored by these two older men. It's like a group of these four or five guys were being mentored by these two older guys. Um, and then I usually end up having lunch with somebody, um, connecting with somebody else on that day too. So that day is just, it's highly relational, but I do that on purpose. Then I have a phone call on Wednesday, every Wednesday at one thirty, I have a phone call with another guy that I'm in, I'm in connection with. And we talk very honestly about life and wow. our, our journey. So my, my point in saying all that is that you you have you don't just like fall into it like you like yeah. you have to make put some effort into it and go what day of the week what hour in the day am i am i going to connect with these people and mm-hmm. uh I, that's just how things work man that's just practically yeah. that's how things work and then there's this cool yeah. feature on your phone that says repeat weekly so just right. do it every week <laughs> just right. do it every week yeah so i agree with you it's hard um, but you know, if, if you put those things into practice, they become yeah. habits. And after a while you look up and go, dude, I've been doing this now for two years. So yeah. anyway, yeah. that's a good word, man. You have to be intentional yeah. with yeah. everything. All right. Yep. Brother, thank you so much, man. It was great to uh, meet you. Thank you for taking the time to even uh, share your heart with worship leaders. And this I love is this so dude. Good and helpful. This is gonna be really helpful for a lot yeah. of people. So. Thanks for uh, asking all the, the good questions and being open to some honest conversation. This is great. Yeah, I love it, man. All right. I'll see you later, man. Much love. Thanks, okay. for, thanks for joining. Thanks, yeah. guys. Bye. All right. See, see you soon. Bye.